Hello. This is the first in a sequence of lectures on aerodynamics. Many principles or laws discovered by the great researchers in aerodynamics are based on a few fundamental laws of physics. So, when we study the flow of fluids and gases, we first need to define a few fundamental quantities in flows like pressure, density and temperature, and then we can see how they are related, for instance, in the equation of state, and how they change with the velocity in the fluid, or how velocity is changed by them. Let's first look at the pressure in a point of the flow field. Pressure is the normal force per unit area on a surface. Here we can see a surface with an incremental force dF acting on an incremental part dA of the surface. Somewhere on the surface dA there is a point B. The pressure in point B is the limit of dA going to zero of the incremental force dF divided by the incremental area dA. It has the unit newtons per square meter or pascal. Imagine we have a volume in which we define an incremental volume dV containing a point B. The mass of this volume dV is dm. The density of a substance is its mass per volume and the density in point B is the limit of dV going to zero of dm over dV. The temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in a gas. This kinetic energy is given by 1.5 times K times the temperature T. K is the Boltzmann constant. Temperature is expressed in Kelvin or degrees Celsius. Zero degrees Celsius is 273.15 Kelvin. Furthermore, we can use the equation of state of a perfect gas. P is rho times RT, in which R is the so-called gas constant for air, it is 287 joules per kilogram Kelvin. A perfect gas is a gas in which the forces between the molecules are negligibly small. We often refer to the properties of air at standard sea level conditions. And then the pressure is one bar, or 1013.25 hectopascal, or 1.01325 times 10 to the power 5 newton per square meter. The density is 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter and the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius or 288.15 Kelvin. Now to get an idea of the weight of the air, imagine you have a room that is 20 meters deep, 10 meters wide and 4 meters high. At standard conditions, the air in the room weighs almost 1000 kilograms. Instead of looking at the density, we can also consider the specific volume defined as 1 divided by rho. V gives the volume of 1 kilogram of gas. The equation of state then reads P times V is R times T. The path that particles over a of a fluid follow is called a streamline. Here we see an infinitesimally small particle B moving along such a streamline. The velocity of this particle in any point of the streamline is pointing in the direction of the tangent at that point. If we look at the flow over an airfoil, or aerofoil if you like, we can visualize the streamlines with smoke for instance. We see streamlines passing over the airfoil upper surface and streamlines moving along the lower surface. There is one streamline, the dividing streamline, that ends on the airfoil leading edge. This point is called the stagnation point, and the associated pressure is the stagnation, or the total pressure. When we put an object in the flow, such as an airfoil, two types of forces can be identified. First of all, fluid particles experience a friction force as they move over the surface of the object. Secondly, since the object displaces the fluid, the object will feel pressure forces that also vary over the airfoil surface. The next lecture deals with two fundamental equations for the flow of fluids, the continuity equation and the Euler equation.